Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about adventures and kindness. Plus, we'll hear an amazing story about a pretty adventurous road trip. This way. Hey, I'm Skylar. And I'm Sebastian. And today, we're talking about kindness. Kindness is showing others that they are valuable by how you treat them. Hey, nice backpack. You getting ready for school early? Nope. I'm going camping at Lake Wanasmakaskita. I love camping. Orienteering, setting up rain flies, cooking in the old Dutch oven, hobo dinners and cowboy coffee. You know what I'm talking about, right? I've never been camping before. First time for everything. I mean, the real trick is just in the preparation, making sure you pack everything you need. Okay, that, huh, I've got covered. Okay, let's see what you got. First, bug spray. Little cold for mosquitoes, but better safe than itchy. Then, what else? there is my Nintendo Switch. There's no electricity in the woods, Sebastian. Then you're not gonna like my next item. What's that? Uh my star nightlight and sound machine. You know that there's stars and sounds of nature. Well, I also pack some non-electric stuff. Great. Um, my knitting kit, a tennis racket, a golf club, got my snake. <laughs> oh, my chicken, you know. We got my, my chair, you know, kinda need that. Oh, my hockey stick. My lucky hat, my backup lucky hat, my pogo stick. Did you know that? Yeah. Oh, and of course, can't forget Steve. Sebastian. What in the world? You know, in case I wanted to make a snack. A snack. Maybe something desserty. That is actually doable. Let's, Let's make, make it. it. So, what are we making? We're going to make a solar oven to bake s'mores in. Sweet. Literally. For this project, you'll need a cardboard box, aluminum foil, some plastic wrap, a glue stick, some tape, a ruler, something to cut with, a stick, and a marker. First, take your box and use a ruler to trace out a lid about an inch from the edge, like this. Then, Cut it out. Remember to ask an adult to help. Be careful. I will. There. Next, we'll use the glue stick to line the inside of the box with aluminum foil. There we go. Make sure you cover it really well with glue. Now we'll attach the aluminum foil to the inside of the box. Oh, like a real oven. The metal reflects the heat. You got it. Make sure the foil is as smooth as possible. Perfect. Then what? Then use double-sided tape to tape two layers of plastic wrap to the inside of the outside edge of the box top to hold the heat inside. All right. It's nice and soft. Very nice. And now we have the second layer. Do you like baking, Sebastian? To a certain degree. Ah, ah, oh ah, boy. Ah, ah. Incoming dad joke. <laughs> and done. So how do we plug it in? Kidding. We use the stick to hold open the lid so the sunlight bounces down into the oven. It's the sun's heat that warms up our s'more. Spoken like a camping pro.
Now, all we have to do is head outside and set these babies up. Ah, I can see it already. Eating s'mores and telling stories around the campfire at Camp Wanna Smack Esquita. <laughs> Speaking of stories, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the Gospel of Luke, the third book of the New Testament. Luke wrote about the life and ministry of Jesus. We find Jesus doing what he does a lot, talking to people, young and old, sick and healthy, powerful and not so powerful. And when Jesus spoke to people, he often used parables. A parable is a fancy word for story. More specifically, a story that uses things people know about to explain something about God's kingdom. One day, a religious expert showed up to talk to Jesus. This guy thought he was smarter than Jesus. Spoiler alert, he wasn't. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Padma. In Luke, we discover a conversation between Jesus and an expert in religion, who is really just an expert in missing the point. People like him weren't happy with how Jesus was changing things and they wanted to trap him in his own words. So this expert asked, Teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? And like a good rabbi, a Jewish teacher, Jesus answered the question with a question. What is written in the law? This man knew his stuff. He answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> You've answered correctly. Do that and you will live. There's a difference between smart and smarty pants because this expert thought he'd stump Jesus with one more question. And who is my neighbor? Jesus answered the man by telling him a story, a parable. The story went something like this. Once upon a time, there was a man who traveled along a road, a dangerous road, in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, some robbers jumped out from behind a rock and hurt the man. They took everything he had and left him on the side of the road, sad, hurt, and all alone. Sometime later, a priest came along, a man whose whole job was to help people follow God. The priest saw the hurt man. Help! Help me! He's a priest, so of course he's gonna help the guy, right? I mean, it's the right thing to do. But no, the priest pretended the hurt man wasn't even there and walked past him on the other side of the road. Not kind, not cool. Please. Then along came a Levite, a man who helped people worship God. He saw the hurt man. Help, please. But just like the priest, the Levite walked right on by as far from the hurt man as he could get. I'm right here. Once again, not kind, not cool. But then a Samaritan man came along. Now, at this time, people from Samaria did not get along with Jewish people. It had been this way for hundreds of years. In fact, Jewish people would walk way around just to avoid walking by a Samaritan town. Oh no. Don't look this way. But this Samaritan cared about people more than he cared about old grudges. He felt sorry for the hurt man and stopped to help. Oh, they roughed you up good, but you're gonna be okay. I got you. The Samaritan man's kindness didn't stop there. He even carried the hurt man on his own donkey to an inn, which is like a hotel. There, the man could rest, and get better. The Samaritan even paid the owner of the inn to take care of the hurt man until he was well again. Take good care of him. And if this money doesn't cover your expenses, I'll pay you back when I return. When Jesus finished telling his story, the religious expert said nothing. Then Jesus asked him one more question. Which of the three do you think was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by robbers? The proud expert who had tried to trick Jesus just minutes earlier was forced to humbly admit the answer. The one 
the one who felt sorry for him. Go and do as he did. Jesus made it clear. Your neighbor isn't only the person down the street. It's not just your friend. Your neighbor is anyone, anyone who needs your help and kindness. The end. Wow, the Samaritan helped the man even though there was nothing in it for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it even cost him time and money. I bet even his own people were mad at him for helping. You don't see that kind of kindness every day. I like that Jesus used his story. I mean, he could have said a lot of stuff to tell the expert that he was even smarter. But instead, he used a story that anyone could understand. Jesus did that a lot. So, what's our part in the story? Kindness is showing others they're valuable by how you treat them. And one of the most powerful forms of kindness is showing love to people who are different from you. Like, if there's a new kid who comes to your school from a different country or speaks a different language, you can ask them to sit at your lunch table. Or if someone thinks or acts differently than you, you can choose to listen and be kind to them, even if you don't agree with them. You can even be friendly to someone on the soccer team that just beat your team. Easier said than done sometimes. True, but remember, while you can't be best friends with everyone, you can still show kindness to everyone. You guys got this on lock. Peace. Bye. So here's the thing. Be kind to people who are different from you. Okay, let's do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, the good news is that we have successfully baked s'mores in our new oven. So what's the bad news? We have also brought in ants. Wait! Are they on me? Are they on me? Thanks for joining us in the story lab. Oh, seriously, do, do you see any ants? See you next time. Sebastian! Oh my. So good.